Hi guys. The book we're going to read today is called A Pocket for Corduroy. That is the title of the book. Remember, the title of the book gives us a clue on what the book is about. So today, we're going to read something called A Pocket for Corduroy. So that means probably we are going to read about pockets. As we look at the illustration here, you saw how I pointed at the pocket? Because the illustration and the title can tell us and give us hints on what the book will be about. The author of the book is Don Freeman. The author of the book is the person that writes all the letters and words that you are going to see as I read. So that meant when they wanted to write the word pocket, they needed a letter that went p, p, p. Yes, the letter P for pocket. Here we go. Late one summer afternoon, Lisa and her mother took their laundry to the laundromat. As always, on such trips, Lisa carried along her toy bear corduroy. So now we know the name of the bear, which is in the title. Corduroy is the bear's name. Now some of us might do our laundry in the laundromat because we live in apartments that do not have a washer dryer. Ms. Rachel's done that. So what they're doing is they gather up their dirty laundry and they take it and there's a building with lots of washers and dryers and they're big too, so you can do a lot at once. Ms. Rachel's wish she had ones that were that big yeah, at her house too. The laundromat was a very busy place at this hour. Now, Corduroy, you sit right there and wait for me, Lisa said. I'm going to help with our wash. Corduroy waited patiently. Then he suddenly perked up his ears. When he perked up, that means, because <gasps> what do we use our ears for? to hear, to listen. So that means he probably heard something. Lisa's mother was saying, be sure to take everything out of your pockets. Lisa, dear, you don't want your precious things to get all wet and soapy. That's true. When we do our laundry, we check our pockets because if you have something like a marker in there or lipstick, you will get it all over your clothes and that won't be good, will it? Pockets, said Corduroy to himself. I don't have pockets. He slid off the chair. I must go find something to make a pocket out of, he said. And he began to look around. So he realizes he doesn't have a place to carry his special things. Because pockets are really handy. Some of us put wallets in there in our pockets. Some of us put our phones in our pocket, which is also why you want to make sure you check them. You don't want to wash your wallet or your phone. Some of us put our toys, little toys in our pockets, and we don't want those to get wrecked either. But Corduroy realizes, I don't have any pockets. So how am I supposed to carry my precious things? First, he came to a pile of fancy towels and washcloths, but nothing was the right size or color. Now, these are too big, and he doesn't like the colors. Then he saw a huge stack of colorful clothes in a laundry bag. There ought to be something in there to make a pocket out of. He said, so he's going to crawl into that dark laundry bag. Oh, boy. Without hesitating, he climbed inside the bag, which was filled with pieces of wet laundry. The dampness didn't bother Corduroy in the least. So that's a big word. Dampness. Dampness. So when something is wet, it's damp. And so all the laundry in there is damp. But he didn't mind. This must be a cave, he said, sighing happily. I've always wanted to live in the dark, cool cave. Which is true, because that's where bears like to live. They like to live in caves. When the time came for Lisa to fetch her bear, he was gone. I wonder how she feels. <gasps> oh, no. I don't think she's happy. Oh, Mommy, she exclaimed, Corduroy isn't where I left him. I'm sorry, honey, said her mother, but the laundromat will be closing soon, and we must be getting home. So the building's going to close, so she can't stay around and keep looking and looking and looking and looking. 
Lisa was reluctant to leave without corduroy, but her mother insisted. Reluctant is another big word. Reluctant means she didn't really want to do it. She didn't want to go. And insisted means her mom said, yes, we are leaving. Insisted means you have to do it. Come on, let's go. You can come back tomorrow, she said. I'm sure he will still be here. As he left, a young man wearing an artist beret was taking his wet laundry out of, the, out of a bag, the very bag Corduroy had discovered. So you see this type of hat? That type of hat is called a beret, and lots of artists like to wear those. Why? I don't know. I was an artist, and I don't remember why we were supposed to wear berets, but we just all seemed to like to wear them. Before he knew it, Coterie was being tossed together with all of the sheets, shirts, shorts, and slacks. So he's getting tossed into this big machine. Oh. So he's getting tossed into the dryer. The dryer is where you put your clothes in, especially if they're damp. The dryer will make them dry. But just as the artist was shutting the glass door, Corduroy tumbled out onto the floor. How in thunder did that bear ever get mixed up with all my things, the artist wondered. Poor Corduroy was damp all over. The least I can do for him is give his overalls a good drying, the man thought, said the man thoughtfully. He unbuttoned Corduroy's shoulder straps and put his overalls in the dryer. So the overalls are the type of clothing that he was wearing. Overalls are pants that come up very high. They go over your shirt and you button them over here. So your pants never fall down. It's kind of cool. Kind of handy dandy, cotton candy, as I like to say. Corduroy grew dizzy as he watched the clothes spinning around, but the artist became inspired. So inspired means had an idea. He had an idea. <gasps> And he's watching the clothes go round and round and round and round and round and round. And round. This would make a wonderful painting, he said, as he took a sketch pad out of his pocket and began drawing the swirling colors. I could hardly wait to go back to my studio. Finally, the dryer stopped whirling and the man gathered up the clothes. Then he helped Coderay put on his warm, dry overalls. All at once, the manager of the land the manager of the laundromat called, Closing time! Everybody out! Corduroy was gently placed on top of a washing machine. I wonder who that bear belongs to, said the artist as he was leaving. Seems to me he should have his name someplace. He's too fine a fellow to be lost. So he left Corduroy there so that they, whoever lost him could find him. That's nice. As soon as the lights were turned off, Corduroy began his search again. He was surprised to see something white glowing in the dark. Maybe it's snow, he said excitedly. I've always wanted to play in the snow. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's snow. We don't usually put snow into boxes. Let's see what it is. He accidentally tipped over the open lidded box and suddenly he was covered with soft, slippery soap flakes. Gradually, Corduroy began to slip and slide. So that's not snow, that's soap for the laundry. Some of you might still use this. A lot of us, I, you know, I use the liquid or we use the pods, but they used to have it be a powder and some of you might still use the powder. It doesn't matter which one you use. It's whatever works to clean your clothes best. So some people like powder, some people like liquid, and some people like pods. What fun, he said with a smile. I've always wanted to ski down a steep mountainside. So he's still having fun with it. That's kind of nice. He landed paws first in an empty laundry basket. This must be a cage, he said, peeking through the bars. I've never wanted to live inside a cage like a bear in the zoo. He's not so happy now. But by now, Corduroy felt drowsy, and soon he nodded off to sleep. So drowsy means, oh, tired. Next morning, when the manager came to open the door of the laundromat, there was Lisa waiting. I left something here yesterday, she explained. May I look around? 
Certainly, said the manager. My customers are always leaving things. Lisa was searching under the chairs and in back of the washing machines when she heard the manager call her. Is this what you were looking for, senorita? <gasps> Look who he found. Yes, yes, he's my best friend, shouted Lisa as she came running. She reached in and picked Corduroy out of the basket. So this is where you've been, you little rascal, she said. It's time I took you home. Lisa thanked the manager and ran out the door and down the street, holding Corduroy tightly in her arms. I thought I told you to wait for me, she said. Why did you wander away? I went looking for a pocket, Corduroy said. Oh, Corduroy, why didn't you tell me you wanted a pocket, asked Lisa, giving him an affectionate squeeze. So affectionate means love. Oh. Different ways to show love. That very morning, Lisa sewed a pocket on Corduroy's overalls. And here is a card I've made with your name on it for you to keep tucked inside, she said. I've always wanted a purple pocket with my name tucked inside, said Corduroy, as he and Lisa nuzzled noses. Oh, what a sweet story. The end. Thanks.